The Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, said that the Dajjal comes with a mountain of bread. Have you ever asked how did he get that mountain of bread? And when he gets that mountain of bread, he says, Allah's messenger the people will follow him for his bread, even if he says a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. They don't mind. It's the bread we want. Yes, we want the bread. Even though the streets are clean and the law is efficient and this and that and the other, and you can get a good salary and so on. But we don't care about the moral foundations of that society built by the job. We don't care for its decadence. We only want the bread. <laughs> well, how did he get the bread? The mountain of bread. And we said, it's because of riba. And Allah and his messenger, uh, the last verse to be, the last passage to be re revealed in the Quran was on riba. And Allah and his messenger will wage war because of riba. But we don't care for that. We want the bread. We leave Pakistan and we come here for the bread. What is riba? We told you riba in, in the world today the most important uh, manifestations of riba are in the monetary system. Some people don't even understand what's the meaning of the word monetary system. The monetary system is the money that you use for buying and selling. The money that you use for measuring value, the money that you use to store value, that's your monetary system. And Allah gave us a monetary system and we abandon it, yes, shamelessly abandon it. Without any care for fig leaf, we abandon it. We don't care to try to bring back that monetary system that Allah gave us. We have more important things to do in life than that. We have to give dawah and dawah and dawah. That's what they're saying. What is that monetary system that Allah gave that today has been destroyed and riba is ripping you off and you don't even know it? He gave us gold and silver, dinar and dirham. The schoolboy doesn't even know that the word dinar is in the Quran. The schoolboy doesn't even know that the word dirham is in the Quran. He doesn't know. He doesn't care about that. He has more important things to do in life than to bother about dinar and dirham and arguing against using gold and money. Even though Allah speaks of it in the Quran, he has more knowledge than Allah today. That's right. So the monetary system that Allah gave us, which is gold and silver, it is money with intrinsic value. You think the schoolboy cares about that? Money with intrinsic value. The value of the money is in the money. He has more important things to do. I am bitter. My language is bitter because I have been talking for 25 years and it's a voice crying in the wilderness for 25 years. They wouldn't listen to me. The, the Darulum shut their doors on me. The Masajid shut their doors on me. And you expect me to be cool and calm and quiet and smiley? No, I'm boiling with anger inside of me. What can I do? They're using a monetary system which is bogus, it is fraudulent, it is haram. And they are ripping off mankind like a suction pump sucking the wealth of the world. You think that Darulum cares about that? You think the Maulanas who have graduated from the Darulum care about that? No, the only thing that they want to do is to shut down Imran Hussein. That's all, nothing else. Shut him down. The International Monetary Fund is the most dangerous weapon in the jazz hand. You think any Darul will make that statement? That's right. And they believe they are the highest 
category a status of pursuing knowledge in Islam and no one must make any critical comment about them they get very angry I don't care to peanuts for them because if our people are miserably poor today if Algeria is so poor and Morocco is so poor and Tunisia is so poor and Egypt is suffering and suffering and suffering Egypt is suffering if Pakistan and Bangladesh and Indonesia if all these places if Africa is so poor and my heart bleeds for the poor you think they care for this why is this why is there this widespread poverty and people have to be economic refugees. You think they care even two peanuts for that? The International Monetary Fund is the jazz most dangerous weapon today because they have taken gold out of the market. The articles of agreement of the International Monetary Fund prohibit the use of gold as money. And that's why they can bring their bogus money in the market. I have studied international monetary economics in two universities and I have brought the Quran to bear on international monetary economics. So don't challenge me unless you've done your homework. Don't challenge me. I know my subject. And uh, no, they started with paper money. Of course, Britain started it. And the sterling pound, the British sterling pound, was the international currency in the first phase of the shadow. They don't even know about the shadow. My words are bitter. My language is bitter because inside of me I'm burning with anger against them. They will not listen. They would not listen. They would not learn. And then came the US dollar to replace the sterling pound. We know when. The first stage, a day like a year ended and a day like a month began. We know it was at Bretton Woods. We know it was when the Bretton Woods Agreement realized the replacement of the sterling pound with the US dollar. That was the last nail in the coffin for Bax Britannica. Oh yes. And then the US dollar became the international currency. And then when the time came for demolition of the U.S. dollar, they came first of all with the petrodollar. And the U.S. dollar flew high, oh yes, fly like an eagle with the petrodollar. And then when the time came for the petrodollar to be demolished, they came with cryptocurrency. But do you think these fellows understood it? Did they? Do you think they understand what is the role that the cryptocurrency is playing and Bitcoin is playing? No, they have tunnel vision. They don't know the big picture. And this is how they're able to now to move to a new monetary system, which is going to be even worse than everything that came before. One single currency for all of mankind, only one. And guess who controls it? Oh yes, the Zionists probably this the Israeli Central Bank. That's coming tomorrow while they're eating the biryani and going home and sleep. Forgive me if I'm bitter because I have every right to be bitter on this subject. But then this is not the only way that they ripped us off with the monetary system. And you cannot find any government in the world of Islam, not even Imran Khan's government, which will declare Dinar and Dirham was legal tender. They don't have the backbone to do that. None of them. Declare Dinar and Dirham to be legal tender, even while the Pakistani rupee is still accepted in the market. If you use, if you declare Dinar and Dirham as legal tender, it means you are legally entitled to ask for your salary to be paid in that Sunnah money. That Sunnah money. That sunnah money, I repeated it three times. Any laborer can ask for his salary be paid in that, not in the bogus paper money. <laughs> we had a salary, we could buy a camel. A few years later, we can only buy a donkey. Uh, that's that money. Everybody will realize that money is bogus, they want this money, and the rupee will automatically by itself collapse. 
But no government will do that because if you do that, you have you'll be standing in the face of the IMF, and not even the, uh, the Russian government will declare gold and silver to be legal. And the only one country has done that, I believe, is Israel. And some states in the United States have done it. But until such time, as our people wake up, and you get a government led by a man of, of knowledge and wisdom and, and, and courage and knowledge to declare dinar and dirham as legal tender in any country in the world of Islam, we have to wait and just keep on teaching this subject. But there's another way that they also suck the wealth of the world and they get the mountain of bread. And if you want to understand that way, you must read John Perkins' book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Allah explains in the Quran why money must not be lent on interest. It is not a business transaction. But we don't have the time to teach that subject tonight, today. The banking system destroys the free and fair market. When the free and fair market is destroyed, money will no longer circulate through the economy. If I had Malcolm X sitting with me, Malcolm would understand this subject in one minute. That's all he needed. But these fellows in the Darul Um, you could teach from now until Kiyama, they will not understand. And if they do understand, they don't have the courage to preach it. My language is bitter. Yes, I am bitter because of this colossal betrayal of the Quran. If you if you allow money to be lent on on interest, you will corrupt the economy. You will destroy the free and the fair market. You will no longer have a healthy economy. What is a healthy economy? They don't teach this. A healthy economy is one in which wealth, let me speak slowly. A healthy economy is one in which, Imran Khan, are you listening? A healthy economy is one in which wealth circulates throughout the economy. Allah has given means and ways through which wealth will circulate through the economy because, he says, لَا يَكُونَ الدُّولَةَ بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدَ أُوزُمِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Because he does not want an economy in which wealth will circulate only amongst the wealthy. So now today, because there is universal riba, money being lent on interest through the banking system and through the IMF and so on, the commercial banks, everywhere is there proliferating all over. And still they eat their biryani and go home and sleep. Allah is going to wage war and still they eat biryani and go home and sleep. The Prophet has cursed you and still they eat the biryani and go and sleep. What a pathetic ummah we are today. What a brainwashed world of Islam there is today. What a horrible thing it is to live with these sheep and these cattle who keep on going to the IMF. Yes, they keep on going to the IMF to borrow money. When wealth no longer circulates through the economy, then the implication would be, number one, that the rich will remain forever rich. Number two, the poor will now be imprisoned in permanent poverty, and that is oppression. And the religion which has come from Allah with Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon them. It has zero tolerance for oppression. That's all. And so you have a sick economy and they have the mountain of bread. But the mountain of bread is going higher and higher because they are siphoning the wealth of the world through their monetary system. 
And so not only are the rich permanently rich, but they're getting richer every day. This is enough for now. My students know this subject long because I've been teaching it for so long. You, the new generation, are hearing it for the first time. The Christians who abandoned the law which came down with the Lord God, prohibiting money being lent on interest, prohibiting usury, the Christians have forgotten it. And we have to try to get them to come back to the law. We pray that Allah might bless us in this blessed Ramadan. And uh, tomorrow might be the last uh, session. And if we give that session tomorrow and then we have Eid, then we have to make dua for my daughter Hira, who uh, even while she was doing her final year exams, she still took time every day during Ramadan to record these sessions. So may Allah bless Hira. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.